It appears that the Xbox modding scene is more alive than ever. And thanks to a couple of new projects, both of which are only a few months old, there is now a way for you to install up to an eight terabyte or an even 16 terabyte hard disk inside your original Xbox and actually be able to access all of that space. Previously, that limitation was just two terabytes. Here in front of me, I have what I believe to be a working stock Xbox. I picked this up well over a year ago at a yard sale. It was super cheap. I had no use for it at the time, but I knew that I'd find something to do with it eventually. So today's the day. This is actually gonna be the first time that I hook it up and nothing unexpected for the kind of condition when you pick up and use one of these, just super dirty with caked on dirt, definitely could use a good cleaning. There's a small sticker covering the screw hole that would be underneath this bigger sticker right here. Although the one back here doesn't look like it's been tampered with, I suppose that could have been very carefully peeled back and stuck back down. But in any case, let's set this guy aside for a moment. Now, when you're hard modding an Xbox, you need to pick up a few things. You need a SATA hard disk, a SATA to IDE adapter, an 80 pin IDE cable, and in my case, a mod chip because I'm hard modding the system. So here I have the Aladdin XT plus two. The hard drive that I've selected is a three terabyte Western Digital, super affordable drive. It's gonna let me get the entire library of games onto one hard disk. But like I previously mentioned, with these new mods, you could take your build all the way up to eight or even 16 terabytes following the process that I'm gonna try here today. You could almost call this a budget build. Everything that I picked up to mod the system cost me about $85 and if you want a larger hard disk, the four, six, and eight terabyte only go up in $15 increments. So don't discount these 5,400 RPM drives. They're super affordable and they're plenty fast for something like the original Xbox. So if all you're looking to do is enjoy some games, you are not gonna be disappointed. Unless you're benchmarking the system, you're probably not even gonna notice the difference. Let's hook this guy up and see how well it runs. And here we go. and system starting up just fine. And the controls are working just fine. Okay. So we have a working system here and I'm actually quite relieved about that because I'm not looking forward to a big repair job with this particular project. I'm eager to just start tinkering with these new super massive hard drive mods. Having said that with any stock Xbox, there's a couple of things we always have to do, and that's remove the leaky clock capacitor and reapply the thermals. Let's go ahead and open this guy up, take care of those two things, give it a quick cleaning, and then we'll move on to the mod chip and hard drive upgrade. This system's definitely been worked on before. There's two stickers here, and I can tell from the bottom one, it's been punctured. Whether that's an official repair or not, I don't know, but it's definitely been opened. Okay. Top cover should just come right off. It might need a little bit of convincing. Oh, that's on there tight. Okay. All right. So next we have three screws we need to take out, one, two, and one hiding under this IDE cable. Let's remove the IDE cable from the hard drive. The power cable can be a little bit difficult to wrestle out, so what I like to do is give this cable some slack and then remove the entire enclosure. Set the hard drive down and then with a flathead screwdriver, let's try and get this on video for you guys. Okay. Optical drive is much easier to work with, so we'll just unplug the data cable and the power cable, and then this whole enclosure should come out as well. I believe that I am looking at a version 1.0 board, which is really exciting. The giveaways are the fan on the GPU, the video encoder chip up here, this whole daughter board assembly for the controller ports up front. 
Had this been a newer revision motherboard, I would not have been able to choose Sir BIOS at the time of this recording. Right now, Sir BIOS only supports motherboard revisions up to version 1.3, but it's very likely by the time that you're watching this video that that support has expanded. The project's still in beta and progress is being made by the day. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Let's continue extracting the board from the case. Now the board should be ready to come out. Okay. Now this is the clock capacitor right here. And at least at first glance, I don't see the usual spill all over the board that causes a whole world of problems. So that's great news, but we'll go ahead and remove this guy in a little bit nonetheless. Now, careful not to break these clips, but there's one on either side. Now the side, and it clipped out. All right. I think this is as far as I care to disassemble the unit. The top case can go in the sink. We'll clean that with some dish soap. Uh, everything else I'm just gonna dust off in the garage with the air compressor. Let's take a quick look inside this DVD drive. A little bit of dirt by the laser, so we'll give this guy a good dusting as well. Now we'll just gently get the pickup out of the way a little bit. If we push this white plastic thing, it should lift the whole tray up and out. And that'll give us a chance to dust the belt area as well. Let's grab some lithium grease. Nice fresh cotton swab and very gently dust off the laser. Okay. And the drive is ready. We'll just set that aside. Now let's work on the thermal paste next. I don't like to use a spudger for removing the CPU clamp. I've broken one of these before. It's quite brittle if you try and wedge something under there. So my preferred way of doing it is just using my fingers. and it comes right off. Now, the stuff that's under the GPU is usually rock hard. I'm not even sure I'm convinced that it's thermal paste. It's more like thermal adhesive. 
the CPU usually comes out fairly easily. So I like to slide this guy off first. It shouldn't require too much effort. Now, again, for the GPU, I don't like using a pry tool. Um, I'm just gonna work it with my fingers. Usually takes a couple of minutes and uh, it's pretty stubborn, but it's the safest way I've found to do it. Okay. So just my two cents, before you go fan modding your Xbox, trying to quiet it down, just replace the thermal paste under the GPU and the CPU. That's gonna go a long way to keeping the system cool and quieting it down using the stock fans. All right, so let's set the board aside for a moment and let's work on the heat sinks. Let's take care of the GPU. This is the last of my MX4. That takes care of all the thermals and this guy is gonna run cool and quiet. Time to address the clock cap and work on the mod chip next. All right guys, I'm all set up. It's time to remove the clock capacitor. That's this guy right here. Oftentimes you'll find nasty capacitor residue, even some corrosion around this capacitor. Every system I've worked on prior to this board has had a leaking clock capacitor. Most people just remove it. Its function is not critical, all it does is keep the system time for six hours when the Xbox is not plugged into the wall. I happen to have replacements, so I'm just gonna swap mine out. These are one farad supercapacitors rated at two and a half volts. Okay. All right, there's our new clock cap from up top, and that's what it looks like from the bottom. Sweet. Time to move on to the Aladdin mod chip. So here's our mod chip. This is our pin header, and we need to solder this to the Xbox's LPC port right here. Now the pin header is gonna solder into the LPC port like that, but we need to remove this top right pin right here because we only have a single through hole on the second row on the left and there's nothing on the right. So let's just go ahead and push this pin out. Just like that. And now we can solder this into the port. Before we do that, we're gonna to have to clear up all these 
through holes. So let's go ahead and take care of that. Let's flip the board around. Now our pin header can slot right in. Perfect. And you might have noticed I cleared up one extra through hole right here. And that's because there's one wire that needs to go from the mod chip to the other side of the board. So instead of wrapping it all the way around, I'm going to slot it through this hole and solder it where it needs to go onto the other side. Now, while we're back here, I'm gonna go ahead and solder that wire that I was referring to that's known as the D0 point, and it's different for every motherboard revision. So for a version 1.0, it's going to be this little via right here. So right next to the RAM bank, you have this series of vias, and you count one, two, three, it's the third one down. So we need to solder a wire from here, slot it through that hole, and it's gonna to connect to the mod chip on the other side. Now, I've cut a short strip of Kynar wire over here. It's just 30 gauge wrapping wire. It's extremely thin. You could use whatever you want, but this is gonna help me keep the installation nice and neat. We'll put a small piece of Capcom tape on there just for some good measure. All right, guys, let's take a closer look. So here is our soldered in pin header. And here is our D0 wire. Beautiful. Okay, so last step before we install the mod chip, we need to ground the BT point, that's this guy right here, and we're just gonna ground it on this pad right here. That's just gonna make sure that the mod chip is always on. Back in the day, you might not have wanted that behavior if you were gaming on Xbox Live, but today there's really no benefit to turning the mod chip on and off. We want it to always be on when the console starts up. I just wanna make sure that I'm not shorted to this adjacent trace right here. And we're not. So we're good here. And nothing here, perfect. All right guys, final step. Let's get this mod chip ready to install. So this guy's gonna plug in here like that. And the D0 point where this wire is gonna go is on the underside right here where it says D0. I do not need this guy to be super long. Maybe something like that. That should be enough slack to install and remove the mod chip. Come on. Okay. I just remembered something. Um, it's not labeled on this mod chip, but on previous Aladdin chips that I've installed, you can actually wire the D0 to the back. So even though there's no label here, I suspect that D0 is gonna have continuity with this pad, in which case we can just install the mod chip and wire it up on top. So let's confirm that real quick. Let's go ahead and touch that pad on the back. 
and that is indeed D0. So we can definitely wire this on the back side and it's gonna make this a lot easier. We'll tin this pad right here. All right guys, so that concludes the mod chip installation. There's nothing left to do but test this guy out, make sure the mod chip's working, flash it with Sur BIOS so that we can take advantage of our super massive hard drive and then everything else is in software. So let's hook this guy up and give it a quick test. We'll reinstall these fans in a moment. Let's just go ahead and get the board in there. Now we'll just slide the case fan back in and click it into place. All right. And we'll attach the power cable to the motherboard. Now, for the time being, I'm just gonna install the old hard disk into the Xbox. As it stands, the only new component that we've added is the mod chip. So let's just verify that the system works with the mod chip and then we'll go ahead and swap out the hard disk and the new ATA cable just to eliminate those additional potential points of failure. Go ahead and slide this guy in. And with that, I think we are ready for our first test. All right, guys, I'm all hooked up now. We're gonna be doing some video capture over composite just to test that the system works. And there's a number of steps we have to take care of as well before we get the new hard drive in here. But we'll do an HD video test at the very end over component cables. For now, I just wanna make sure that everything works and it's gonna be easier to do that over capture card. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this guy in. Let's hit record and first boot. And we see the Evo X logo. So the mod chip is, the Xbox rather, is booting from the mod chip. Wow, this thing is loud. All right, let's shut this thing back off. Okay, so our mod chip is working and we're ready to move on to the next step. Before we do that, let's just take a quick look at the GPU fan and see why it was spinning as loud as it was. I have run into this before when I over tighten those GPU fan screws on these uh, 1.0 Xboxes. So we might have to just loosen them just a little bit and it should take care of that uh, fan noise. All right, let's plug this guy back in and just power it on like this. All right, I think that's a lot better. We'll keep an eye on that, but like I said, I've run into this a few times before and usually it just means that the GPU fan screws are over tightened. Now that we've verified that the mod chip works, let's go ahead and prepare the new hard disk and install it in the system. So I'm on my PC and I primarily use Macs at home, but I keep an old PC around for projects like this. Now, when I open up computer, I don't see my hard disk there and that's because it hasn't been partitioned yet. So even though it's connected, we're not gonna see it just yet. So let's go ahead and open Fat Explorer. 
Now, once the tool opens, you're gonna click on formatting tools. Then you're gonna select original Xbox hard drive. It's gonna do a quick search and it found my three terabyte hard disk, which is connected to the computer in a Seagate enclosure. So I'm gonna select it and click next. Then we're gonna see the bias selection page and we're gonna select SirBIOS because that's what we're gonna be flashing the mod chip with. So we'll just click on SirBIOS and click next. Now on the partition configuration screen, we're gonna be able to create our massive single partition. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all these automatically created partitions that the tool has suggested. And I'm just gonna create one massive F partition with the full three terabytes. So I'm just gonna go into them one by one and deselect them. And once we get to partition F, we can max it out. And even though I could select 256K clusters for my three terabyte drive, I am gonna select 512K and I'll go into a little bit more detail about why I did that in the comments. But for now, let's just select 512K, click next. We're not gonna preload anything, so we're just gonna click next. And then we're gonna click format. Now the tool's gonna format and partition the drive and we're done. So once it's done, we're gonna click on devices and I'm gonna select my Seagate enclosure. I'm gonna click on load device, and then I'm gonna scroll down and look for my F partition. So there's my partition F, and I'm gonna mount it to drive X. So now in computer, I have a drive X that I can copy files to and from, and we have roughly 2.7 terabytes of space. Keep in mind that you're also gonna lose a few gigabytes to partition C and E, which the Xbox requires for the file system application saves and things like that. Now I'm gonna connect my external hard disk, which has all my ROMs on it. So I have everything on this five terabyte drive. So I'm gonna go into my drive, into my Xbox games folder. I'm just gonna select everything. Looks like I have 874 games in here. I'm gonna click copy. I'm gonna go back to drive X. Let's create a new folder called games. And we're just gonna go ahead and paste everything into the games folder. Now, we're gonna have to leave this overnight. I can't really max out the speeds that some other people are able to get with this tool. That's partly because I'm using an old computer, I'm using an old USB 2 enclosure. So all of that together is gonna impact performance and everyone's results are gonna be a little bit unique, but I'm gonna go ahead and let this finish and then we'll resume with the project. I have my SirBIOS formatted hard disk ready to go and I've gone ahead and loaded it up with my entire library of games there's just shy of 900 games on here, which is almost the full set of NTSC games. I learned a thing or two from having done all of this a couple of times before. And when it comes to the ATA cable, you really wanna get a 24 inch version. It's just gonna make your life so much easier. I did pull this off with an 18 inch version. These are cheaper and they're easier to find and it works, but you don't have an inch to spare. So save yourself the headache, pay a few extra bucks and just get yourself a 24 inch cable. The other thing is the IDE to SATA adapter. The last time I got a generic adapter and it was very poorly made. I had to reflow all the pins to make sure that it worked properly. And it's just one of those things. Save yourself the trouble, pay a few extra dollars and pick up a StarTech brand SATA to IDE adapter. The build quality on these is really, really nice. Whether you're using a 24 inch cable or an 18 inch cable, there's a bit of an art to folding it so that it's gonna fit neatly inside your Xbox. And you would think you could just mimic the folds on the original cable, but you can't because it's backwards. Microsoft was a little bit sneaky here. And there's two things that as far as I'm aware of were designed backwards in the Xbox. And that's the orientation of the IDE ports and the polarity of the tray motor in the optical drives. There were PC versions of all these Xbox optical drives used on PCs at the time, and those would not work in your Xbox because they were wired backwards. So here's how I like to do it. You stretch your cable out, you have a longer end, and you have a shorter end. Normally, this would be the side that would go to your motherboard, but we're gonna install this backwards, and this is gonna be the side that goes to our motherboard. Now, what you need to do is, you grab the middle cable and you make sure the notch is facing up. I like to bend this cable forward, fold it over on itself all the way. Fold it backwards again. We'll fold it back down behind the optical drive. Fold it back like this. So this side's gonna go into the motherboard. 
and we have plenty of slack to plug this into the optical drive. And we'll worry about this when we install the hard disk. Plug this guy in. Just a gentle fold like that, so it lines up a little better with the drive. Let's go ahead and plug the drive. And I'm hoping I don't have to take this back out, so let's go ahead and slide on the metal shield. Let's go ahead and get the hard drive in the caddy. Let's go ahead and slot this guy in. On the StarTech adapter, it should be set to master out of the box, but if it's not, make sure this jumper is set to master. So we can imagine that the StarTech adapter is just gonna sit in like that. And this cable comes down like this, folds like that, up like that, and then into the adapter. So we are gonna be able to anchor it under the stock anchor point right here. If you were using the 18 inch cable, you are not gonna be able to do that. It's gonna be really tight and it's gonna fold something like that and just gonna run kind of diagonally. So let's go ahead and plug this in for a test. And we'll get the power adapter ready as well. Now we know exactly where this fold needs to be and we can fold that down. Last couple of highlights about this section if you're using a different adapter. Some people are concerned that the pins on the back of the adapter can touch the hard disk and short things out. I've never had that problem with a StarTech adapter. You might have that issue with a generic adapter, but if you want a little bit of insurance, you could just put some double-sided tape on the back of this thing. But as it stands, you would need quite a bit of force to get those pins to touch. That's just not gonna happen naturally, at least with this adapter. The other thing is this little piggyback connector that comes with these StarTech adapters. I think I'm just gonna cut mine off. It's gonna make the install a little bit neater. Um, you can leave yours on if you want, but I'm gonna go ahead and just snip mine off. All right. Now, these contact points are too far apart to really ever touch or short anything out, but I will dab them with a little bit of nail polish just to insulate the ends and keep any moisture out. And we'll just give that a few minutes to dry off. All right, that's feeling dry to the touch, so I think we can continue with the insulation. Let's just curl this guy in here and attach it to the stock cable. All right, I've neatly routed all these wires best I can underneath the existing clips. Let's put this guy back in. This has got to be one of the cleanest Modchip and hard drive install videos I've ever done on an OG Xbox. I'm so proud of this work, guys. It looks amazing. All right, we have two things we need to do next. We need to install a dashboard so that we can access the system, and we need to flash the Aladdin Modchip and update the firmware with Serbios so that it can see these new super massive hard drives. Now for that, I like to use OG Xbox installer. I'll link this in the video description. You could also use Hexen. Uh, that's another utility disc that's worked very well for me in the past. You could do all of this over FTP and your computer and not have to use a disc at all. I personally don't like doing anything on the computer other than copying my games over. I just like using these utility discs. I find them easy to use. But like I said, it's up to you. Uh, you could use them or you could do everything manually yourself. So let's hit record, power this guy on, and pop this disc in. Nice to see the fan noise is gone. So we see the Evo X logo, and now it's going to boot from the utility disc. Okay. So we're in OG Xbox installer. I'm going to go to install or switch dashboards. Let's do install single default dashboard, install XBMC for gamers. So we'll just give that a minute to do its thing. Do you wanna make XBMC for gamers your default dashboard? Yes. All right, let's go back. Now, before I shut the system down, one thing you'll notice on the right side of the screen, the installer disk has access to drive C and drive E. It can see a 500 meg drive C partition and it can see a 4.7 gig drive E partition. It cannot see our super massive partition on drive F where all the games are. And you're gonna run into a similar thing if you try and do this with 
Evolution dashboard or Unleash X, those dashboards just haven't been updated to take advantage of partitions like this. So we kind of have to use XBMC to see these super massive partitions, at least for now. Let's turn the system off. I'm gonna plug in a network cable and we're gonna fire the system back up. All right, we are connected to ethernet. Let's fire this thing back up. So we're in XBMC, let's create a new profile. All right, so we're in XBMC. I'm gonna hit the black button. And on this little summary dashboard here, we can see two things. We have an IP address, which is good because that's gonna help us FTP into the Xbox to copy Sir BIOS over and flash the mod chip. And uh, you'll notice under drive space, again, we can see drive C and E, but we can't see drive F. And right now the limitation is not XBMC. XBMC will be able to see all those extra massive partitions. Right now the problem is the mod chip. The mod chip doesn't know what to do with that extra partition. So we have an IP address. Let's go over to the desktop. We're gonna FTP SirBIOS over, and then we're gonna come back and flash the mod chip with SirBIOS and restart into XBMC and see what this dashboard screen says after that. On my desktop here, I have my FTP client open and I've just created a SirBIOS folder where I've downloaded the latest version of SirBIOS, which as of the making of this video is version 2.0.1. So we're just gonna go ahead and extract the archive and in the folder, we're gonna see that there's two BIOS versions. There's a retail BIOS and a debug BIOS. We're gonna flash the retail BIOS. So I'm gonna go ahead and rename it BIOS.BIN and I'm gonna delete the debug BIOS just so I don't make any mistakes. Now in my FTP client, I'll enter the IP address of my Xbox. That's the same IP address that we saw on the dashboard summary in XBMC. The default username and password is just Xbox. You can enter port 21, click connect. Now, once we're connected to the Xbox, we can navigate to drive C and in drive C, we'll create a new folder called BIOS. And inside the BIOS folder, we're gonna copy BIOS.BIN. And on the root C drive, we'll copy SirBIOS.ini and the boot animations folder. And that's gonna be everything that we need to copy over. So I've copied the BIOS files over. Let's shut the system off. And I'm gonna power back up with my installer disk. So we're back in OG Xbox installer. We're gonna to go to flash BIOS. We're gonna to go to BIOS tools. I'm going to launch Resktux, if that's how you pronounce it. I think a lot of people like using XBlast. Uh, there's more than one way to do this. This is just the tool that I like to use, but use whatever BIOS flash tool you want to use. So I'm going to scroll over to advanced, flash menu, hard drive flash, and it automatically knows to look in the BIOS folder that we created and it sees there's a file called BIOS.bin. It's gonna press A. There's no confirmation, nothing. Just gonna go ahead and flash our Aladdin mod chip. Okay, the Xbox sh sh shut itself down. It's restarting. And we have Sir BIOS in the house, baby. Woo! Guys, I'm getting, I'm getting goosebumps. Seriously, can you see that? You can't. I'm so pumped. All right, let's load the profile we created. And now it should automatically start scanning for our games because it should see RF partition. And sure enough, So we'll let that scan and do its thing. All right, so it's done scanning our games. Now let's go ahead and download the artwork. So we'll go into settings, we'll go to downloader. It's gonna prompt us to update the download links. So I'm just gonna say, okay. You'll always wanna let it do that because that's gonna make sure that you have the most up-to-date download links anytime you enter the download area. Now we'll go down to artwork, Xbox artwork installer download. 
it says it needs 14 minutes. I suspect it's gonna download a lot quicker than that, but I'll check on it and we'll come back when it's done. I'm gonna close this thing up once and for all, hook it up to the TV and tweak the artwork settings to how I like them and we'll do a final reveal to wrap up this video. Last one right here. Nothing but a little dish soap. Looks amazing. Let's carefully flip this guy over. And close it up once and for all. All right, let's go ahead and fire this guy up. Sir Bios logo. This is the boot animation, which is customizable if you look into the Sir Bios INI files. I've set up XBMC the way I like it, so it's gonna auto log into my profile. Now it's doing a game scan. It's only slow the first time you scan your games. It's pretty quick anytime you start the Xbox after that. So it just takes a few seconds. I've downloaded all the artwork. So I have it set up like a cover flow. And it's gonna be a little bit choppy if you fast scroll on any stock Xbox, but looks very beautiful otherwise. If you hold down Y, you'll get a synopsis of the game. So it's a great way to discover new games if you're unfamiliar with the Xbox library. So you can read a quick synopsis, look at some metadata, and even take a look at a few screenshots. Now, if you look at the dashboard summary, we have about 150 gigs of free space on drive F. And that's out of almost 2.7, 2.8 terabytes. So I've managed to get all my library of games on here. It's almost the full library of NTSC games, close to a thousand games. I'm only missing a few titles, but I have the space to add those in. Now let's just try a random game. I love my fighting games. You'll notice the Xbox is actually pretty quiet. You can hear the stock fan spinning, but it's not loud by any stretch. Yeah, boy. All right. We have reached the end of this journey. So if you've made it this far, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And I'm so pumped about this build. You have no idea. I mean, this is gonna replace my current modded Xbox. And I'm just really excited to have the whole library of games on one system or something very close to it. I'm almost done completing that collection. To me, that's what the ultimate Xbox experience represents. There's so much entertainment value from a build like this, but having said that, you know, the ultimate Xbox is different to each person. You might have very different goals with your build. So if you're thinking of trying Sir Bios and building a four, eight, 16 terabyte Xbox, let me know what you plan to do with it um, and how you plan to go about that build. I'd be very interested in hearing about your project um, in terms of this unit, I think I accomplished what I set out to do. We took a stock Xbox, put in a new clock cap, new thermals, refurbished the optical drive, installed a mod chip, flashed it with Cerebios, and I have the full library of games on a three terabyte hard disk. Shout out to Modsville USA. Uh, he's the one that brought this project to my attention. So this build turned out to be a lot cooler than the plans that I had for it originally, which was just maxing out the 2.2 terabytes that the older 
uh, mod chips and BIOSes support. I think the last thing I'll mention is, um, given this is a somewhat technical project, it's hard to escape that. And believe it or not, I've barely scratched the surface. I mean, I haven't even gone into any of the features that make Sir BIOS unique beyond just the super massive storage. There's a lot of things that the BIOS can do and I'm not gonna ruin it for you. I encourage you to read about the project and find out. But um, what I'll do is I'll pin a comment to this video and I'll highlight uh, some of the uh, decisions that I made during this build and just explain them a bit further. I don't think everyone's gonna be interested in that, but someone that's thinking of doing something similar might be. So. Um, I'll go into a little bit more detail in the pinned comment and um, if there's a recurring theme in the questions or something that uh, wasn't super clear, I'll try and keep it up to date for the next couple of months, uh, just given how new this project is and uh, just to help it get a little bit more exposure if you're thinking of trying this build for yourself as well. All right, guys. Thanks again. Take care and I'll see you guys soon.